I'm Susan. Welcome to my studio. Today I want to show you how I create these simple clay earrings. So let's get started. Now I'm starting off with just this little slab of clay. This is done on a thinner setting on my pasta machine. Zero is the thickest setting and I'm doing this on a number three. I want a thinner piece just because I want to layer it and I don't want it to be too bulky. Now my clay, I just want to give you an idea, is about two and three quarters of an inch by almost three inches. I just took a random cut, but sometimes perspective wise, if you watch this really close up and I work so close up, it seems bigger than it actually is. Now here's all little swatches of clay. I just went through my clay and made all little swatches. And the reason I say that you should do this is if you don't have the clay in front of you, you might be looking for a color and you might say, oh, I want gold. You'll use the gold that's in front of you or you'll mix it a little. But to go through all your clay may be a nuisance where if you just have all these little swatches, it makes life so much easier, especially when you're doing this type of thing. So these are just clear view pages that I get at the office supply store, the page protectors. I cut them in four so that I have a side for each piece and they just stay so nice in this. They're just an easy way to store these and I just keep them right here. So when I'm looking for a yellow, I have a whole tray of yellows and if I wanna make them later, I just have to add a little bit of white to any of my colors. And some of these are just leftovers from when I was making a cane or something. I just mixed up the ends and I have just these little bits left. Keep all those little bits. They're great for this type of a thing. Let's go with this pretty green. We'll do the typical green and flowers. Now I have these two cutters. I've used these in a jillion of my videos, so I figure you guys probably all have this cutter set. I think it was like a dollar and a half or two dollars, and it comes with four of them. Well, this is the two smallest ones. I'm going to go for this minty green color. So I've got a little snake here, and I'm just going to cut it in some random pieces. Pretty similar though, just so I get a similar size. I don't, they don't have to be exact. Um, and easier to roll this in my hand. I just want one little piece that looks like a grain of rice. That's the only way I can describe this. Now the nice thing is when you put it on a piece of plastic or paper, you can turn it. Now, if you're doing it on paper, you have to finish it up the day you start it. If you do it on this piece of plastic page protector, you can get up and not worry about the clay drying out. The paper will absorb the liquid in the clay and it can make it very brittle and difficult to work with. So that's why I like the plastic page protectors better. They're just a lot more forgiving. Now, I'm making a pair of earrings out of this, so obviously you can see I'm matching each side up and this worked out to be the perfect number. That is called dumb luck. Now I'm just gonna take my needle tool and just blend that clay out. This way it'll bond it into my slab. So I won't worry about it, we're coming off. And you need very little clay for this technique, so that's the really nice thing if you're new at this and you don't have a lot of clay. So now I'm just gonna take a lighter green, chartreuse green, and I'm going to do the exact same thing once again with a bunch of little pieces, making them like grains of rice. And just remember to have fun doing this. This is supposed to just take away your stress, so don't worry if it doesn't come out perfect, it's just clay. I just wanna layer some greens up here to get a pretty background for those flowers. And once again, just blending them down. And we could use some more green here. I'm really liking this green mix. 
Now it just depends on how striking you want this or how subtle what shades you pick. And I'm also not counting here, I'm just whatever I have is what I'm cutting. And we'll see how it comes out. And this could be a feather also if you just continued with the same color, with different colors. You could make these into feather earrings. Don't feel like you're stuck. Sometimes things change along the way. Go with it. Enjoy the experience. Now this is a great way to do this if you're in a group of people and you're all working together. This is just a fun way to do polymer clay because you can share colors and share palettes. Now if you notice they're not exactly matchy-matchy, I like that, but if it bothers you, make them matchy-matchy. I want a little bit of white, and I don't like my white that bright, so I have a tendency to just tone it down with a little gold. This white has a tendency when you put it on, it's just after you bake it, this darkens up a little bit and the white seems to brighten up. And I don't like that. I prefer my white to be a little bit ivory. So I just add a little bit of gold to it and it just gives it that nicer, richer tone. Now working with smaller bits of clay, I don't even bother with my pasta machine. I just roll everything out by hand. I find it just easier. And there I have a nice beige. I like that. And we're just taking tiny little pieces of this and I just want some dots in the back. Think of baby's breath. And I don't care that they're all different sizes because that's how they would be in nature. Now remember not to get too close to the area where we're going to put the larger flowers because you're just wasting your time, you won't see it. And I will be probably wasting my time on some of these, it's just I can never totally predict, but if you have in your head an idea of where you want it, don't put them there. <laughs> now I'm just going to take my little needle tool I want to pull these down towards the center of the leaves so they look more like buds. Now my clay is very soft because I've conditioned this before I started. And as long as it's soft, it spreads and moves around real easy like this. If you have the clay directly out of the package, it won't do this. So it will take a little while to condition your clay. Now I have this gold clay and I've got this orange clay that I've rolled out really thin and I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper because I find the scrap paper easier to cut my clay out with. You can do it with something else, I'm just giving you my suggestion. I just find that it pops right out real easy if I cut it on a piece of paper. And now I'm just going to take my little needle tool and just put a couple indents on the flowers. So I'm just adding two little indents on each petal. but you don't have to add the indent. You can do this however you like your flower. I'm just trying to show you something a little different. And you can layer the flowers up however you like. Now I'm going to take this orange and I rolled this orange out just a little bit thinner than the other lighter color. And I'm using the super tiny cutter. And this cutter is like sprinkles that you'd put on a cupcake size but it's one of my favorite cutters. Mm -hmm. 
And let's just put some of, yes, I think I don't want any more. I like these little orange ones just at the top here. They're like an orangey gold. Now, just taking your needle tool and pushing it in the middle gives you that perfect center. And if you have any tiny rhinestones, you could put them in the middle. If you don't have them, you can also use size 15 seed beads, or you can just leave them alone. I like them any which way. I like them with the seed beads, the rhinestones, or even just plain. I think they're really pretty. Sometimes just the simplicity of an item is very pretty. Well, now that we have those done, I bought all these earring cutters. They were on the Christmas sale at Michael's, and you know, we, I thought, oh, I'll see what these are. These are so popular. I don't recommend these. They're too big. They're kind of an awkward size. Personally, that would be, it's a weird shape. It's kind of uneven. It's not even perfectly shaped. These aren't talking to me. Instead, I'm going to take a piece of paper and I've drawn out more of a shape I'd prefer, one that's even on both sides. And I think more of you could probably do this. Now here, you can change this any which way you want. Just looking right here, you can kind of tell. Will this work? Won't it work? I think it'll work perfectly. I like the shape to this. And I like the fact that I can change and make any shape I want just with a piece of paper. So the easiest way that I find to cut it is to cut this in half. But it's also easier to cut this if you just have a piece of paper because it sticks to the clay right on top. And now, and just take my scrap paper and turn it around and I get a perfectly straight edge right on top. And then just take an X-Acto knife and cut around this. And I know you're wondering why don't I want this pointy? I like that rounded edge. I think it looks softer. If you want it pointy, leave it pointy. And there's a way I like to soften this softer edge. This is just a gift card that I've covered in paper. And I just like to go over that edge and round it out and smooth this edge down really nicely. I have this one cut out perfectly. I'm just going to smooth these edges with my fingers and make sure they're all perfect. And now I have some one and two millimeter rhinestones. They're light pink and a darker pink. And I'm just going to put a little dot of liquid clay in the center of each flower. Now, if you don't have any rhinestones, you can use some 15, size 15 seed beads, or you can just leave them. And I'm just putting a little dot of liquid clay in the center. And this is a wax pickup pencil. You can get these in the nail section or from any nail company. They're fantastic at just picking up tiny beads and tiny rhinestones. And now I'll just bake these for about 10 minutes so they harden up and then be right back. Now I have my tiles all baked, and I bake my tiles on a tile. This is just a bathroom floor tile. It's pretty yucked up with all sorts of paint and stuff that's been on it, but it still works just fine. And they slide right off. It just keeps it so it's nice and flat, and I don't have to worry about it bending or curling as it would if it wasn't on a perfectly flat surface. So now I want to back these so that they have a nicer frame around them, and I'm going to use some gold clay and I have some gold leaf. And don't worry, like right there where it's broken, I was going to make it crackle anyway. And I'm just going to cut around it so that I can put gold on the back. Now I've run this through on the thickest setting of my pasta machine because I wanted to thin it out so that it had some cracks in it anyway. That's why I say don't worry about that. I'm just trying to get it down so that I can flip it over. And here's another piece. And it's best if you can just slide it off. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It's so delicate. 
and I'm back. Now you could just use this just exactly how this is or you can stamp it with the design. I love the way it looks with all the crackles in it and on both sides it has all those beautiful crackles. And the way I achieved that was I put it through the pasta machine in one direction. I put it down this way and then I turned it and put it in the opposite way so that I got the cracks to stretch the clay in both directions evenly. Now, because I want a design on it, I have one of these folders. This is just an embossing folder for paper, and you can buy these at any of the craft stores. You can also use a rubber stamp, but what I like about the embossing folders is there's an innie and an outie on it, and it's basically like a stamp, except that it does both sides at the same time. So if you basically get your design in here, and I like to just take my roller and give it a good press. You could roll over this. I found that to be very effective, but I find when I really want it deep in certain areas, just pressing directly on those areas works best. And you can see through this exactly where you have it deep and where you don't. Because the gold leaf is so metallic and so reflective, I can see where it's embossed already. And the nice thing about this is it sits, the clay sits in it, so you get it to stay in there. If it didn't come out perfectly, you get a second chance on it. And there you can see how I get that beautiful design. Looks like I spent hours, doesn't it? Normally I would spray this with water, but because we've got all that gold leaf on there, it doesn't need it. Now you can see you have two different sides. You have a raised side, which is this side that has the raised design on it, and you have the other side that has this design impressed in it. Just decide which side you want to use for the top and which one for the bottom. And the way I put this on is I take a little bit of liquid clay. Any kind of liquid clay will do. This one is the Sculpey liquid. And make sure you coat your whole piece. This time you don't want to be chintzy with the liquid clay so that you get a good bond. And now since I have it on a little piece of paper, I can just cut a little edge around it. Now never throw these scraps away. I make lovely little gold flowers out of the scraps. They're beautiful. Love to use those in my bead embroidery. And take your time just cutting out that little frame. But boy, what a difference this makes. Now, you don't have to round out the edges here. I just like the way they look. And I will take the... Now, I want the point at the bottom here. I like the way that looks. But I want these edges rounded out. The difference the edging makes is night and day. It's so much more elegant finished off. Now the one thing you will have to put a little bit of glaze, any type of a water-based glaze will work. And look at the back how pretty it is. Now that it's got that gold leaf on it, it really looks finished. And it looks like a professional piece with all that extra dimension. Just this plain one is pretty, but that gold really sets it off. Now when you bake this one, make sure that you put it on a piece of paper just this piece of paper will actually work just fine. It does not get hot enough to start it on fire. Everybody asks me that, but no, it will not ignite. So I will bake this once again, and I will glaze the gold and come back and show you how I put a hook on it. Now to drill my beads, I use just a standard household drill with the smallest bit I can find. I can't tell you where to sm find smaller bits. Sometimes the hobby stores look around. Whatever's the smallest bit, that's the one I use. To drill my beads, I take the bead and I just hit it with the drill. I'm at a funny angle here, so I'm going to use the one that I've pre-drilled the hole so I make sure I get it in the right spot. But it's easier for you to see at this angle. And I go through it several times so that I get a nice clean hole and I turn it over and go through the back once again. And that's how I get this nice clean hole in all my beads. 
Now to add our earring finding, and I like to add a little bead just because I like that little extra sparkle at the top. You don't have to add the bead if you don't have any. It's still a beautiful earring. I'm using 24 gauge wire. This one's silver, but it's the only one I had that had the label on still. This one doesn't have the label. And I'm just going to cut a few inches off just because it's easier to work with. For the base part here, I'm taking the highest part on my pliers and just bending the wire in. And that will create the loop for the bottom here of your earring. So when you go up, it fits nicely in there. Now just wrap it as tight as you can around the bottom here. And your pliers are really your hands with wire. So I take one plier and grab that wire and wrap it around completely. And then clip that off. And you can push this down with your finger or whatever. Get it as tight as you can get it. I bent that towards myself and away from myself to form that tiny little loop around my round nose plier. And then I take my other plier, I switch hands with my pliers, and I grab that little wire and wrap it around. So you're just basically creating loops. And that gives you the wire to hang it from. Now, if you weren't going to add the crystal, you should have added the earring wire in there. But since I'm adding the crystal, I'm taking this extra little piece of wire. I have to move that out of the way because the camera doesn't focus on the wire then. And I'm once again going to make a loop by bending it towards me and then away from me. And it makes it wrap around that little plier tip perfectly. And I'll add my earring wire right here and then wrap this wire around. This is much nicer looking than jump rings and you don't ever have to worry about these opening. So now I'm adding my little bead and then I'm once again creating another loop by bending it towards me and then away from me. And I just want a tiny loop at the bottom here because I don't want this to hang far. So I've got another loop there. I'll add that to my earring finding and then just wrap that closed. Same type of wrapping deal. Now, sometimes I get this and the earring hangs backwards. It's pretty common. It's kind of hard for me to show you. Let's see if I hold it. If you hold your earring up, you'll know. And yes, this one hangs backwards. So that is the back of the earring because that is the clip on the back. This is the front. And all you have to do is take your wire and twist it so that you move that front of the earring into the front and now it will hang perfectly with no worries. And that's all there is to it. And here you have your finished earrings. Now I didn't put any glaze on this piece. I only put glaze where the gold leaf was. I like the contrast of the matte with the shiny. I think it looks very rich and it gives a lot more texture. Now remember when I said you could make a feather out of that design? Here's the feather that you could create without just adding the flowers, basically keeping it a little bit tighter in the center. And this is why I add a little bit of gold to my clay because it just makes it a little bit softer for a design like this, that the white isn't so stark. Now I didn't add any crystals at the top here because I wanted to show you how they would look without the crystals versus with the crystals. And they still are very pretty. And there's enough rhinestones in here to make the difference. But even if you don't have any rhinestones, there's enough design going on that they would be very pretty without the rhinestones or without the crystals. Now I wanted to give you a perspective of how large these earrings are because when I work so close to the camera so that you can see all the details, you kind of lose perspective and think my earrings are gigantic. But actually, they're small. They're pretty small and I just wanted you to get an idea of when I start out with a piece of clay that's about two and a half by three inches, what my end product is. Here's the feathers. And these were really fun and relaxing to do. And you only have to do one pair. You don't have to make 50 pairs or anything. It's not like caning. It's one of the reasons I like these techniques is because you can just sit and just make a pair of earrings for the afternoon and just relax and not feel like you have to invest a whole lot or have a whole lot of clay. So a starter kit will get you really far with this technique. There's no caning involved and it's just fun. So I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching.